Hey everyone, welcome back to another video over the Wreath Network on TriHackMe. Today we're going to be taking a look at task 38, AV Evasion, AV Detection Methods. So before we get into the practical side of things, let's talk a little about detection methods employed by antivirus software. Generally speaking, detection methods can be classified into one of two categories. Uh, so we have static detection, and then we have or dynamic uh, slash heuristic slash uh, behavioral detection. Modern antivirus software will usually rely on a combination of these. So let's go ahead, scroll down. Static detection methods usually involve some kind of signature detection. A very rudimentary system, for example, uh, would be taking the hash sum of a suspicious file and comparing it against a database of known malware hash sums. This system does tend to be used, however, it would never be uh, used by itself in modern antivirus solutions. For this reason, it's usually a good idea to change something when working with a known exploit. The smallest change to a file will result in a completely different hash sum, so even something as small as changing a string in the help message would be enough to bypass this kind of rudimentary system because you're altering the hash in that way. Fortunately, or unfortunately for us as hackers, this is usually nowhere near enough to bypass static evasion methods. So let's see. The other form of static detection, which is often used in antivirus software to much greater effect, is a technique called byte or string matching. Byte matching is another form of signature detection, which works by searching through the program, looking to match sequences of bytes against a database of no, uh, a known database of bad byte sequences. This is much more effective than uh, just hashing the entire file. Of course, it also means that we as hackers have a much harder job tracking down the exact line of code responsible for the flag. The trade-off with this method is, of course, speed. Checking small sequences of bytes against a potentially huge program with multiple libraries can take a comparatively long time compared to the milliseconds it would to, uh, to take the uh, to hash the entire file and compare the hash against a database. As such, a compromise is sometimes made whereby the AV program hashes small sections of the file to check against the database rather than hashing the entire thing. This obviously reduces the effectiveness of the technique, but does increase the speed somewhat. Where static virus uh, malware detection methods look at the file itself, dynamic methods look at how the file acts. There are a couple ways of doing this. So we have AV software can go through the executable line by line, checking the flow of execution. Based on predefined rules about what type of action is malicious, so for example, if is the program reaching out to a known bad website or messing with values in the registry that it shouldn't be, the AV can see how the program intends to act and make decisions accordingly. Two, uh, we can have the suspicious software uh, can be outright executed inside a sandbox environment under close supervision from the AV software. If the program acts maliciously, then it is quarantined and flagged as malware. Evading these measures is still perfectly possible, although a lot harder than evading static detection techniques. Sandboxes tend to be relatively distinctive, so we need to just look for various system values. So, for example, is there a fan installed? Is there a GUI, and if so, what resolution is it? And are there any distinctive tools or services running? VMware uh, tools for VMware uh, virtual machines, for example, and check to see if there are any red flags. For example, a machine with no fan, no GUI, and a classic VM service running is likely to be a sandbox, in which case the program should probably just exit because we don't really want our malware running out of or sandbox. What do you think we want to help defenders? Nah. If the program exits without doing anything malicious, then the AV software is fooled into believing that it's safe and allows it to be executed on the target. Uh, this is also known as the default behavior of Windows Defender. I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm, I promise. Uh, please no one from Microsoft come after me for that one. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure your antivirus does a little bit more than that. Equally, with logic flow analysis, the AV software is still only working with a set of rules to check malicious behavior. If the malware acts in a way that is unexpected, so for example, has a random uh, code that does the grand something of nothing inserted in the exploit, then it will likely pass this detection method. In addition to this, when working with certain kinds of delivery methods, password protecting the file can get around the behavioral analysis checks, as unlike the user who knows the password, 
the AV software is unable to open and execute that file. That said, dynamic detection methods are usually a lot more effective than static methods. The drawback is, once again, the time and resources required to spin up a VM to analyze the file in or go throughout it uh, line by line to see if it's doing anything malicious. These, actions, uh, these are actions that take a lot of time, causing users to grow impatient and use up a lot of the computer's available resources. Once again, the AV has to, uh, has to compromise using a combination of dynamic and static analysis when scanning a file. Uh, one note on this, uh, a lot of people don't realize, oh, impatient users. Um, if you're launching a new program and you just installed an antivirus uh, software, so maybe you installed like Norton or something else, um, and all of a sudden it's taking forever to start this program, you're probably going to blame it on the antivirus. And you probably want to play, you know, that game or whatever file you just downloaded, even if it's malicious. Uh, <laughs> if the antivirus is preventing you from launching it and it doesn't say why, uh, you're probably going to uninstall the antivirus, which is where the antivirus needs to be able to operate with some sort of speed in that case. Uh, and that's where a lot of cloud antivirus systems come in because they will just handle everything out in the cloud and that way it's not running on your system and rather can be much, much faster. To make life harder still, antivirus vendors are usually in close contact with one another, as well as with scanning sites such as VirusTotal. Uh, don't upload your malware here. <laughs> That's the same as giving the dog your homework and expecting it not to chew it up. That's not going to work out very well. When the AVE detects a suspicious file, it usually sends the file back to servers owned by the provider where it can get analyzed and shared with other providers. What this means is that once our payload is detected on one computer, the chances are that it will uh, quickly be taken apart and shielded against. This rapid sharing of information allows AV providers to stay ahead of bad actors, a good thing I, uh, for everyone other than us, but obviously adds to an extra complication into our job as ethical hackers. Additionally, new techniques are being developed all the time. For example, many attempts are being made to use machine learning techniques to dynamically update the list of bad behaviors in a sandbox environment or the rule list used in uh, logic flow analysis of a suspicious file. If you're interested in some of the work being done in this area, try Hackney's very own CMnatic did his dissertation on the subject, which can be read here. Highly recommend taking a look through it. It is a very interesting read. What other name can be used for uh, dynamic slash heuristic detection methods that is going to be behavioral, if I can spell that correctly. Uh, there we go. There's a U there in the spelling used. All right. If AV software splits a program into small chunks and hashes them, checking the results against a database, is this static or dynamic analysis or a static or dynamic analysis method? Uh, judging not just from the uh, length of the answer there, but from what it's actually doing, that is going to be a static method. When dynamically an, uh, analyzing a suspicious file using a line-by-line -line analysis of the program, what would antivirus software check against to see if the behavior is malicious? That is going to be predefined rules. And then last but not least, what could be added to a file to ensure that only a user can open it. Uh, so preventing the antivirus from executing the payload. That is going to be a password. As the computer's not going to know that. And likely isn't going to take the time to crack it. That is going to do it for this video. I will see you guys next time when we go over task 39. But until then, happy hacking.